May all become happy. May all be free from illness. May all see what is auspicious. May no one suffer. Peace, peace, peace. The essence of the shloka echoes through every corridor, department, and room of India's premier medical institution, Leelawati Hospital and Research Center. The mission at Leelawati Hospital is to provide affordable health care of international standard with human care. Okay, um, so uh, actually she has been our patient for a very long time, 12 years. And she came with a third nerve palsy 12 years ago. What about better wall imaging? With a large peak on, can you hear me? No, 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 no it, it's not a common uh, uh, aneurysm or disease at all, especially, hello? Okay, for the time being, I'm leaving it here. Um, am I supposed to talk or? Jack, I can hardly hear you. We go with your place. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Four point five thirty. Yes. Hello, everybody in Paris. to what uh, Uday uh, is uh, saying and doing. Uh, he has already the VASCO, which is uh, in the parent artery crossing the neck of the aneurysm. He has the gel catheter uh, just to uh, deliver the coils. For the time being, I have no uh, information about uh, what he is doing. Yeah, we, we have the VASCO in uh the middle cerebral artery and we are going in with uh, the Leo plus stent. We decided against a flow diverter because this A1 is very dominant, she is an old lady and we did not want to cover the A1 uh, for an aneurysm which is a regrown aneurysm but not particularly bothering her right now. She came in with some medical symptoms and she had the MC aneurysm, which you probably would have seen on the 3D before its treatment. It was like a completely wide neck incorporating both the M1 segments. And to make the matters worse, to treat it with stents, there was stenosis in both the divisions of the MCA, proximal stenosis. So we treated her um, with the distal aneurysm first and, and we did it with um, a double balloon technique which of course we learned from Jacques so many of those years ago. 
and then now we have to treat her for uh, the proximal aneurysm which is a big regrowth of the previously coiled large PCOM aneurysm. Of course the thing is about probably just put in a flow diverter and get out but because as I said we did not want to cover the A1 which is a dominant A1 in an old lady we decided to go with a Lyotla stent uh, the size we, we decided was a 4.5 by 30 if you actually see the sizing of the vessel uh, it is about 4 in the subacanoid segment but the dysplastic vessel is double that so we cannot ever match the dysplastic vessel so uh, we have chosen a size which is like 4.5 by 30 and um, uh, the catheter in the aneurysm is not very stable so we are just going to leave it with a wire and we hope that uh, when we deploy the stent and we see it on lateral view uh, which will stabilize our echelon catheter which is inside the aneurysm and then we will go ahead and put some um, uh, coils proximally and th that's the plan actually for this. I realized that there was some discussion about the MC aneurysm and it being common. We have seen atherosclerotic disease along with aneurysm infrequently but uh, from what I can uh, remember, many, many of them were in the posterior circulation. And this, as I said, both the M1s were stenotic and it precluded us from using w one or two stents and uh, do a double stent assisted coiling in the MCA. And so we did whatever best that we could with two balloons. And so the coiling of that aneurysm is probably suboptimal, but that's what is required because the neck is completely wide incorporating both the divisions reiterate that she's an old lady and we don't want uh, an ischemic insult on her and even with a double balloon technique she had some deficit in the MCA territory and from from which she she took uh, uh, two or three days to recover so that's why we don't want to cover the A1 so the flow diverter is out here and then now we will go ahead and deploy the Leoplast first and then uh, we will probably put a few coils and then finish this. The Leoplast is now on the way. The distal aneurysm in a way limits all our techniques and it it limited what we wanted to do with the proximal aneurysm and even today as you can see that um, we will have to be really very close with that wire to the aneurysm in order to deploy the stent. We plan to come from M1 Okay, can we get um, a, a magnified roadmap? Okay. Just for everybody in the room, there is no question for the operator. Okay. Usually, there is a representative of the department on the podium doing the comment. Here, as far as there is no representative of the department, there is no question during the live case. Okay, it okay. Speaks, but it doesn't answer to any question. Right. You see the Neoplus coming out now, you see how the wire is bobbing into that M1, almost into the aneurysm and uh, uh, we would accept this position as its distal tip of the Leoplus and 
we will deploy slowly. I want to um, uh, move back to the lateral. Unfortunately, um, this lab, as in, as in many places in India, we, we do not have a biplane. So I'll have to switch from one plane to the other, and please bear with me for that. Go lateral, please. I just wanted to confirm about, can we get, uh, Full map? yeah, can we get a lateral roadmap? And so we deploy this tent. If you have any question, you can ask the question to the panel. We will answer if we can, but you cannot ask the question to the operator. Okay. So be open. Do you agree with the strategy? Who would have used a flow diverter in the treatment of this case? One? Only one. So it means that uh, basically uh, you don't care about uh, covering uh, the origin of the A1 segment, understanding that the only supply uh, for both uh, Ontario Serval territory is uh, A1, left side. If you want, you can answer. You have the question here. Uh, first, I prefer for this case with the PCOM ruptured aneurysm and uh, one on ruptured aneurysm, I prefer to do microsurgery. But uh, if I want to do intervention, I prefer to uh, put at the first time mm -hmm. stem coiling for PCOM. I do the coiling inside of the PCOM aneurysm, and after I put the stent and fill all of the aneurysm with the stent, and the second stage I do microsurgery for the uh, MCA on ruptured aneurysm. But uh, in this situation, I prefer to put uh, Follow diverter for become because uh, I had the same cases. I did uh, okay. it's looking okay. two time coil and uh, yeah. at the third, so third session I did uh, stent coiling, but I have recanalization. Okay. And at the fourth okay. session I did uh, follow sure diverter for the case. Micro. Hmm. Okay, let's go to lateral. We will play a little bit more on the lateral. Which I think you may be Wait, wait, wait. If you do surgery, are you concerned about that middle cerebral artery stenosis? You know, would you open, would you would do an epilectomy, would you do an uh, end-to-end mm -hmm. anastomosis, would you put a temporary clip? I think surgery is not straightforward mm -hmm. for that MCA. At the same token, if you put a stent now and you need to treat the MCA aneurysm in the future, are you going to go through mm -hmm. a flow diverter stent? This is a case that is going to need a lot more thinking than just putting coils or clipping, I think. A little more complicated. What would you do surgically? Who is in favor of doing surgery on that case? Are there any surgeons in the room? Let's go to that corridor. Oh, position. there are we'll surgeons in the room, stand. no question. Road map off. Just keep some rounded coils ready. Microsphere good. Okay, he's, uh, he's trying to uh, look at the uh, extremity of the Leo. Yes. His main concern was to deploy the tip of the Leo, the distal extremity, a little bit far away from this aneurysm. Yeah, get a rubber. To preserve probably the access to this aneurysm in case there is another uh, treatment to perform, understanding that there is a tight stenosis which is uh, complicated. Okay. Good. And still present here. You 
know, thinking about putting a flow diverter, uh, suppose you have to retreat this aneurysm, and uh, you have to think about putting your flow diverter potential. Uh, one of the real problem is uh, delivery of the proximal uh, part of the flow diverter. It's a real crucial uh, technical concern, and we will try to uh, address uh, some uh, message regarding the possibility to uh, deploy exactly where you want to do it uh, regarding the proximal part of the flow diverter. Suppose you want to deal with this uh, middle cerebral artery aneurysm and the flow diverter, there is a very short segment here, and you want to be sure that potentially the proximal part of the flow diverter is just delivered at the point that you want, knowing that uh, it's a very short segment. Uh, we have two cases today coming from uh, Paris and uh, Bisset Hospital, uh, demonstrating you know, the complex uh, problem to deliver the proximal part of the flow diverter Let's at the right position. Question. It's definitely a point where uh, people have to think uh, about uh, working on a true and uh, precise uh, technology uh, to help uh, this uh, deposition of the proximal part. And coils and also a small balloon. Yeah. So, as you can hear, yes. Jack, um, do we know for a fact what would happen to the right A2 if we put a flow diverter across A1? We really, I, I don't have a way of telling you. No, I don't. Uh, usually the big concern is uh, during the first, uh, I would say, 24 to uh, 48 hours because covering a big vessel with a flow diverter, I'm pretty sure that the vessel will stay open on a long-term basis. But during the first 24 to 48 hours, you never know what's going to happen. Despite the blood pressure, despite everything, you can slow down the flow and get a stroke just because of flow restriction. Uh, you know, on a long-term basis, I bet that it's going to be open. But, you know, for a short period of time, you might get a complication. We have several times uh, and cases, uh, you know, where uh, the flow reduction has led to uh, complication and uh, uh, neurological sequelae. In this anatomy, I mean, I thought if you have two large vessels, it's better than having only one large distal territory. Uh, you mean because of the thumping effect? Yeah. Uh, you know. It's, it's true and, and, and wrong at the same time. Uh, there is a big debate each time, and for the time being, including me, we okay. didn't work on this uh, you know, uh, uh, phenomenon. Everybody knows that if you cover uh, an anterior choroidal artery, nothing happens with the flow diverter. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, you cover the uh, lenticular striate, nothing happens. You cover a branch of the middle cerebral artery, and then you might have a complication. This is definitely related to what the people dealing with fluid dynamic call the Coanda effect. The it? question is, there is not a single physical paper showing why and how we can modify this Coanda effect when you cover a large branch on the middle cerebral or in this situation. And uh, I strongly uh, uh, encourage uh, the young uh, doctors uh, thinking for a PhD thesis to work on this problem and to finally get a good solution to how to modify this Coanda effect in order to preserve the patency of the large vessel that you cover with a flow diverter. So I think he decided to put uh, a balloon inside, right? No, but what was happening was uh, the stent at uh, the bend was not opening very well. And in maneuvers, when it opened, it also came back a little at the level of the aneurysm. So um, I uh, resheat the stent completely, and I will try one more time. In the meanwhile, I think I have misplaced so you know the small aneurysm out of the aneurysm, out of uh, the you small know that there is, uh, catheter, yeah. 
Yes, Jack. Uh, you know that there is a, a material on the market whose name is uh, the Copernic double lumen catheter, which is the only one that gives the possibility to deliver a flow diverter stent, a silk stent, even if the silk is 4.5 uh, millimeter larger diameter, and at the same time you can angioplast the uh, flow diverter okay. if you want to do it because the balloon is already on the, on the catheter. Right. Question here? It seems that the uh, stent deliver micro guide wire uh, is actually working against you here. Yes. I uh, have had situations with that, like uh, with Enterprise, we actually can we cut the micro guide wire just so you can deploy the stent a little more distally without having the risk here of uh, going with the micro guide wire in the aneurysm. Yeah. What are your thoughts about cutting the micro guide wire? Uh, personally, my thought is the same as yours. I would go further, pass the neck of the aneurysm of the middle cerebral artery bifurcation, and then come back progressively and deploy the stent. Okay, which I guess is possible. Maybe, you know, he's working on a single plane. Yes. Uh, obviously, I think he doesn't have the uh, uh, 3D roadmap. So, uh, you know, sometimes it's, uh, it's difficult. You have to adjust yourself to the technology you have. But definitely, I would pass the, the neck of the middle cerebral artery aneurysm and then start the deployment uh, on pulling back the catheter. Or micro should be in. So here it doesn't mean that the stent is not open. I and mean, it's only two wires. So if it's uh, depending on the projection, uh, you can see that the stent is open. It's uh, definitely uh, not something that you can uh, rely on. Here, for example, you know, I would push on the catheter it. to, uh, you know, compress and hmm? deploy the silk. The silk is a very flexible. It does yeah, yeah. navigate uh, like crazy, even in very, very tortuous and especially uh, anatomy. In the we take and uh, it's also we take a uh, stand that you can compress if I you think want we'll, to. we'll finish it, and then if uh, there's a thing, then we'll go inside and plasty. It's a Leo, yeah. It's a Leo. So it's a braided stand. I'm still concerned about that MCA. It looks even worse now. Uh, you know, I would study the collateral circulation. I think that this patient has more risk of that MCA stenosis than the two aneurysms put together. Well, my is okay. So what, what would you do about it? I would do vessel well, imaging, okay. although I can't do it anymore because we put all that junk in. Well, my is okay. But, you know, is it an atheroma? What is it? Because surgery might have been the right answer for this case. Yeah. And doing an end at end, oh, you know, the right Yeah, let's finish it, huh? Yeah. Oh. We are just confirming um, the, the distal and the proximal and the microcatheter position. So far, everything looks to be okay. It's not great, but okay. The proximal part of uh, the stent might be a little concerned, but we have now repositioned it more than twice. So I'm not going to try any more repositioning. And uh, we will try and deploy it, and hopefully the deployment will open the proximal part. If it doesn't, Apples, then we will go inside and plaster it. Stop thinking. No, let's go lateral. Let's go lateral for the proximal part. So the last cell which is left on AP, it doesn't look so great. On lateral, it looks okay. So I'm going to deploy it and hope that it apposes a little better than what it is seen. And 
If there is an issue, we will go inside with a small balloon and try and plasty the proximal segment. Distally, as, as you must have seen, that the stenotic disease is also in the ICA, not just in the MCA branches. And so we are distal to the ophthalmic, which we wanted to, and we are in the stenotic segment. And so I'm just pushing the stent out and really hoping that it pops up. I'm going to do that now. It looks reasonable, but it is not opposed proximally. So I'm going to try and get inside with the microcatheter. It seems as though I have not deployed it completely. It's still attached. It's still attached, right? Okay, it pushes it, opens it a wee bit. I'm sure that it requires a little bit of velocity. A little better, it's pushing it into the dysplastic segment. And proximally, it is a little better than before. So I think I'm not going to push the microcatheter any further release the microcatheter, at least it looks as though we will have an access with a balloon here and okay, let's get, let's get a run. Is the balloon ready? You see, distally we are okay. The dysplastic segment has a little bit of uh, overinflation of the stent, which is expected. That's why we wanted 4.5. But in the proximal segment, we are not opposed as we would like. So I have deployed the stent completely. The microcatheter seems to be inside. I will get out of the system with with the the stent catheter and I'll try and go inside. Okay, should I just get out? Okay, the stand looks to be a little bit distorted and I don't like the position proximally. And it's not, it's not detached, so I think, I guess that we will have to remove the stand. understand that the, the big advantage of uh, having this uh, Copernic double lumen balloon yes. catheter. Yes, we do. Because, you know, the, the, the catheter is already in the position inside the, uh, the stent and you can just angioplast and go quick. So he's removing the stent now. I'm removing the stent. It's like you can see how completely distorted it is. And I'm just taking out... Uh, OK. 
ओके So you remember uh, last year I think uh, I showed a case of the uh, PCOM not a PCOM a P1 segment aneurysm where you know the stent was perfectly deployed but the patient despite uh, Let's follow it. the uh, double antiplatelet treatment he got a clot and uh, because of the clotting we could not solve the problem and this guy had no supply of the PCA so I had to remove the stent and I showed the way to remove the stent despite the fact that the stent was perfectly deployed so there are little tricks uh, that you can do uh, here the stent was already captured on the tip so it was uh, much easier of course you have to uh, definitely uh, remove the whole uh, guiding catheter and everything yes Okay, so in the meantime, he's going to reposition the, the, the catheter. Yeah, yeah we will uh, reposition. Probably we will take this opportunity to move back to uh, B-set. Sure. What does he have in the, what does he have in the groin? Okay. Yes. Uh, we have to take the sheet out. I know. And what do you do? I'm going to put it down. How is he going to get that catheter out? <laughs> we will see that. I mean, does he have a sheath in the groin? I mean, is he going to go through the entry? You need a double link. Uh, you better have a, a sheath where you can disconnect uh, the hub. This is a question of uh, uh, Alex. You know, if you don't have the possibility to disconnect the hub, then you are stuck with uh, with the stent inside. So uh, I definitely advocate everybody to have a, uh, um, a sheet where you can disconnect the hub, so it's easier to remove the whole thing. Well, it's a little trick. I'm sure that everybody knows that. But, uh, you know, you, if you start with the wrong, uh, what we call the base camp, uh, it's going to be difficult. So, nevertheless, uh, we are going to move to uh, B set. In the meantime, uh, uh, Mumbai is going to reposition the guiding catheter and uh, uh, we'll go back to uh, Mumbai uh, later on. Okay? Yes, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yes. So, uh, the live case is ready in Bisset Hospital. Let's go for that. Wait. Let's, let's uh, this is the slides of the presentation of the case. Let's keep the eight, eight French short sheet ready. Why well, can't do it from here? So I don't have to move. Okay, so 49 years old female, no past uh, medical history. Uh, mm -hmm. In May 2015, mm -hmm. she got a subarachnoid hemorrhage, mm -hmm. which is a grade one. Uh, this is what you can see on the CT scan at the time uh, she had the bleeding. Initial angiogram is uh, showing that uh, uh, very uh, uh, special, uh, you know, basilar distribution. There is no PCA, as up? you can see here. On the other side, there is no subarachnoid uh, okay. vertebral artery, no Watch connection with the basilar on the left. Uh, fortunately, uh, we didn't rush on the lady, but 10 days later, she had this uh, huge uh, vasospasm with something that is appearing very strange. There is a dissecting aneurysm here with a very tight uh, narrowing of the vessel. This is the dissection here. There is no supply on the basilar, and you already know that there is no supply coming from the other side. Anterior spinal artery, just to emphasize uh, on the drawing, 
she had a PCOM, so that's the reason why the lady didn't get worse. She got a retrograde flow, as you can very nicely see here, uh, with a sumping effect uh, from this uh, Haika uh, territory. Uh, so that's the reason why she has not suffered of this occlusion of the basilar, proximal occlusion of the basilar. But nevertheless, as you ready? can see, uh, the basilar artery is hmm. very, very tiny. Okay. I'm just pulling so it this is a kind of summary of what has happened to this patient. Initial, 10 days later. Watch it down, please. And two years later. Yeah, on, on this. So what does that mean? And here, if it means that, in obviously, we didn't rush it. on the treatment of this Watch aneurysm. It? It's a dissecting aneurysm okay. that has happened yeah. after the bleed. Just keep a tug on this. This dissecting so aneurysm, obviously, regarding and understanding the anatomy, uh, it was definitely better to don't rush and to don't try to do something. Otherwise, it would have uh, get probably a, a major complication. So two years keep later, the lady is, uh, is in a good condition, but she still has this aneurysm. And uh, as you know, Probably nobody in the room is able to predict what's going to happen with that aneurysm. Nevertheless, yes. it's a stable situation on a dissecting aneurysm, on an mm. aneurysm post-dissection. Mm. And uh, we definitely think that uh, we have to do uh, the treatment uh, of this aneurysm. Uh, this lady also had an incidental finding of a pericalosal artery aneurysm which definitely has grown on the follow-up. This is the initial follow-up. This is the one-year follow-up. This is the post-coiling of the aneurysm That's that has not bled. The feeding came from uh, the basilar territory. So today, this is uh, what we have. Uh, there is a fenestration of the vessel, as you can see here. No, and uh, the pica territory is definitely involved in the base of that aneurysm. And there is a tight stenosis, a tight stenosis here, you know, just uh, before the entry of the neck of the aneurysm. It's post uh, dissection, uh, remodeling of the vessel. Uh, nobody knows uh, what uh, the. Uh, I would say that the strength this only solid, of this uh, uh, stenosis, uh, if you can uh, angioplast, if it's going to be enough to deliver uh, a stent potentially or a flow diverter to treat that aneurysm, for the time being, we don't know. Uh, what we don't know, too, is considering this anatomy, tortuous anatomy, narrowed vessel at the base of the aneurysm, uh, how the stent is going to behave if we decide to put uh, flow diverter to treat this aneurysm. So there are several tricks. And, uh, you know, for this 20th anniversary, we have a lot of startups working with us. And uh, there is one startup whose name is Simon Cure. They make a kind of uh, digital uh, reconstruction of the stent according to the constraints of the anatomy. It's a big data calculation. And uh, we will uh, demonstrate from the angio suite, because it's done on the spot at the time we do the treatment, the way we manage uh, this uh, uh, stent uh, behavior. So the plan of the treatment is that one. You have a guiding catheter, which is an alien 6S. The micro catheter is going to be the phenon, which is the new micro catheter uh, from uh, uh, Medtronic. The micro guide wire is an Avigo 14. The stent we decided to choose is a pipeline stent in the lower channel. The lower channel means this one. So we can occlude potentially that okay. one, and we don't want to compress. If you go from the upper one, we don't want to okay. compress this Let's one to be to secure. We prefer to put the stent in this situation. Yeah. Nevertheless, okay. nobody knows what's going to happen here okay. because okay. of uh, the impossibility to uh, understand the elasticity. Uh, do we care about the origin of the pica? Yes, we do care, but it's a small vessel, and in between the risk of getting a potential rupture of this aneurysm 
uh, we definitely think that uh, the small risk of having a Valendorf syndrome, which usually, usually, most of the time, recover very nicely, okay. it's better for the patient to do the treatment. A deconstructive operation, when the patient had an acute episode, the vessel was not feeling. If you would do a proximal occlusion, reverse the flow, remember there was a dissection. I do, huh? definitely. I do consider. Okay. It's another possibility. Much more simple. Uh, I don't know if it's more efficient, but uh, I suppose that uh, if you occlude the parent artery, you will occlude the parent artery here, so you get a reversal of the flow. You keep the flow in the pica, and then you expect that this aneurysm is going to uh, shrink. Totally agree. You know, if I was uh, 20 years ago at the time we did the first link, I would definitely go for a deconstructive treatment. Today, according to what we understand for the treatment of this kind of situation with slow diverter, including not necessarily this one, which is a point that we really don't master, but we master the possibility of this spica to stay open. Uh, uh, the stent deposition that we decided to do, just a schematic drawing to show you. The stent calculation is going to be done by uh, this company, Sim uh, and Cure, to secure uh, your treatment. You know, our sheet. Okay, this is the team who is going to do the work. Emery Crusoe in the middle, uh, Laurent Hale, and on the side, uh, Arnaud uh, Bernborn. Uh, the picture was taken yesterday. Uh, it was a very sunny day. Uh, we were in good shape, uh, and uh, the out. picture looks uh, very nice. Now let's go to the live transmission. Okay, so B set is open. This is coming, but uh, the big one is not coming. The big one is free. Yes. We require a big one. This is 4.30? 6.30. 30. okay. We still have the, the sorry, we still have it, right? It has to be up a little. Okay. I take it up. 
Ja, wel te waar. Ja. Oké. Hmm. The moment you take out the sheet, it will go down. Yeah. Maybe you take the solitaire up the floor. It's in the profunda, huh? Is it? Other arteries. Your forearm stray from here only, no? Yeah. Because this is not catching anything. Not catching. Mm. In the meantime, uh, Laurent is going to start. Uh, we have to select in this firm here okay, the box. Out this. We have the name of the doctor in the Rubians who decided to apply for the treatment hands on for the model treatment and the parallel session treatment. So this morning we will yeah. select the name of one of the doctor who is going to do the case in about uh, 40 minutes uh, from now. So I will see. I shake. No, in case and you take this out, I take one. For that reason. We cannot take one more. Renato one more, Tocelo uh, Brazil. Where is Renato yeah. Tocelo Brazil? And we have to. Yeah. Maybe he's in Brazil. Just open okay. it up now, we'll see. Another Brazil. Darcio Nali, Brazil. Darcio Nali, Brazil. Okay, good. So, in half an hour from now, there is a motor cab who is going to pick you up to Bisset Hospital. Flash and there, yeah, people will take care of you. We will dress you, we will fix you everything on the model, and you will be treating the model. Okay? Good. Thank you. So, we will let you know the possibility how to reach the motor cab. Don't worry, it's a very nice weather. You have 30 or 40, yeah. 35 minutes in front of you. Don't worry. Yeah, Thank well you well. for applying. Huh. For tomorrow. Gotcha. For tomorrow, we will select one of the doctors for the morning Correct. and one of the doctors for the night. What if it is free in the vessel? Plus, we don't want to lose this. If you lose this, then so it's going to be bleeding and stuff Laurent like that. So, in the meantime, is uh, selecting the right projection hmm. to do the treatment. If you want, uh, should we put a neuron from the other side? Yeah, but it's like 4 mm. This is what we have. No, I. 6 mm is a regular snap. Neuron, I'll put it here. On the other side. Yeah, or what we can do, you know, we um, we just let it be. We just go ahead. You know, we, we maybe we can call Ganesh or something for this. I'll take it. Because it's not our work. So, you know, what we want to see is that whether this is without knowing. So, in the meantime, you are looking at the screen. Uh, don't forget that with the app, you can ask questions. And the question will appear on the screen. It's taking it up. Hmm. And uh, for the okay. uh, so then uh, let's doctors, leave uh, all this here. Mm -hmm. the ah, let's go from the other side uh, and at least decide that you know speak, we are doing uh, something are with aneurysm. Laurent in the meanwhile, of the business, yeah. he's doing the, the case. You know, we can he's not in contact with the room, yeah. but here we can discuss. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you know it is luckily uh, this so is open like this, so we should be able to catch it. It looks worse on the on the three D than it does on the two D. The distal vertebral. On the stenosis of this cell, where the dissection yeah. was, so I think we should not bother too much about this now. On your left hand yeah. hmm. uh, maybe it's a question of. Uh, no, no, we're not wasting time on this. Uh, it's a 3D roadmap. We can do that later. 
we have to decide what we want to do with our own map, from the side. And on the road map, if there is a way of uh, doing you know, it, maybe with that uh, only the view of the walls because of the that catheter inside the aneurysm was not stable at all. Because the navigation of the stent screw and so it was bobbing and over up and down. So if we have to come, then we have to come nice from. MCA down, and, and then, then it will have to be an update. This is a kind of a volume rendering, and this is a kind of surface. So mm. we like to have this, and probably this slight stenosis is probably due to flow modification and reconstruction from the vessel. So let me ask you and other people yeah. on the panel. Uh, mm -hmm. So there are, at least from my experience, That's two kinds of dissection. Ah, we'll think about this later. So it's going to have a one that and produces several And in the meanwhile, what you do is just contact Grace and say that we will require your help. Sooner. We can it means not urgent, not way. emergency. And the one that but, does uh, not eventually, produce when occlusion we're done. of the vertebral artery. You think it makes a difference, and you think that's why okay, this so one let's, did let's not go up with because the artery was occluded at the original time of dissection, or does it make any difference? Honestly, let's go up from the other side. Me, I don't know. Let's change that. Also, go up from the other side. Has, uh, leave this as yeah, yeah, leave it here. Hypothesis or true answer. So, look at our document. Uh, are open. Okay, it's here. I, is there I anybody having I mean, some uh, answer to the question of Michael? Oh, you know, we... Yes. 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 There was, uh, there was a, uh, a short term follow-up. Not, not to fly, okay. No, I don't know. On which uh, the uh, distal section of the vertebral mm. vector junction was occluded. Okay, let's go to the other side. With long sheet and let's finish the aneurysm. So I, I honestly... I yeah, I want FDN out. Beforehand, you just um, uh, uh, with the thing but the, take but the, the even cushion. Even cushion with left cross compression. Had time to mature. I had a few cases where uh, ruptured this of a people dissecting aneurysm. Okay, and I went to the end time. And died within a couple of days, at least two or three cases. So I, I think there is a difference. I, I don't know how to define it, but some of them. Don't re bleed and re canalize, and huh. some of them re bleed. Yeah. What, what guide wire is he? For the time being, we'll remove it. Have you go. And we're taking a break and going back again. Have right. you go. So, uh, for the time being, the plan that was scheduled before the treatment is definitely uh, okay. Okay. Uh, on the way. Uh, the wire went, uh, you know, through this uh, lower part of the bifurcation. The catheter is definitely going through the stenosis without having too much uh, a problem. So, you know, the reality uh, and the size of this stenosis is uh, more acute when you look at this and you compare to the easiness mm. to navigate with uh, the, the catheter over the wire, it makes a big uh, a paradoxal situation. So, you know, we were basically expecting having not too much difficulty to uh, go through the stenosis, but, uh, you know, nobody knows. Huh? But by experience, usually it goes through. Jack, would you consider any coiling in this case for the PICA worries you? No, uh, we are not going to put any coils. We think that the pipe is going to do the job. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the anatomical result will be uh, uh, very good. I am also uh, pretty sure that uh, the patient will get uh, an occlusion of the pica uh, on a long-term basis. And, you know, Alex, this is two years later. Uh, it, this patient survived the re-bleed for two years, so it's yeah. unlikely it will have a tendency to rupture. Jacques, what is, what is the difference between the phenom and the marksman? Is it smaller? Is it more navigable? Uh, honestly, uh, this uh, uh, new catheter is uh, very new, and it's very difficult for me to tell you if there is any difference. Um, so looking at the screen and the navigation, uh, it looks the same. Uh, looking at the technical difference between this uh, Phantom and the Marksman, uh, I really don't know. If somebody from the company has the uh, uh, definitive answer, uh, we would love to have uh, this answer. Uh, so maybe nobody is uh, standing up, nobody is asking for uh, a microphone, so maybe we get the answer later. Okay, we'll try to give you the answer later on the technical differences between uh, those two uh, catheters. Yeah. Yes? 
Zach, I have a question regarding the strategy of treatment, Laura. Yeah. I don't understand why you wait two years to do something for this patient. You know, the risk of free rupture of a dissecting, of a vertebral dissecting aneurysm is very high. So I understand that when you do the control angiogram 10 days later, okay, there is vasospasm, blah, 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 blah. But I will have to do a control angiogram, let's say maybe one week or two weeks later, just to check and just to try to manage the patient, maybe just after the acute phase of bleeding, you know? Um, it, it's, a, it's a very good question, and usually when you say it's a very good question, that it gives you the time uh, to find a good answer. So uh, I will find a good answer. The good answer is very simple. At the beginning, intentionally, we decided to wait, because in emergency, I think, in the situation the patient was, it was not possible to do a deconstructive treatment. That would have been the safest way to do it, but it would have been impossible to do it. The concern is, later on, it was difficult to bring back the patient. You know, uh, we have quite a bit of difficult situation, and despite the fact that uh, medicine is free, sometimes the patients are also free to choose when they want to react and when they want to answer uh, to come back for the treatment. So this is definitely a good question. It's a bad answer, but this is the situation. Honestly, this patient, after uh, you know one or two months, it, it would have been better to do the treatment right now. So this is, uh, uh, you know, the the pipe. Uh, it's nothing special. Huh? The pipe is deployed. Oh, there is already no more battery. Oh no, there is battery. Distal part. You use uh, zoom because the pipe is not too much uh, visible. You can the distal part of the pipe is not uh, difficult to deliver. You can select precisely where you want to do it. If you can avoid to cover a branch, you avoid to cover a branch. According to the potential measurement that was uh, given by a semen cure. Uh, it's okay if uh, the distal part of the pipe was there. So we go down progressively and we'll deliver. You remember where the pipe was uh, on the semen cure? I will show you back. So we deliver the, the distal part of the stent right at the position where semen cure measurement uh, decided to uh, give us uh, the position. Here, according to the measurement uh, that was done, we think that uh, there is a little bit uh, too short segment here. We don't want to lose the stand here. So definitely, we resheat the stand and we pull back the catheter. So you don't need to resheat completely. As far as the belly of the stand here has been uh, uh, compressed by the catheter, you can go back uh, very uh, easily. It's not too much a big deal. Just to be sure that the landing zone is going to be uh, long enough on the segment uh, uh, before the uh, origin of the neck of the aneurysm. So I was discussing with the secret line with uh, Laurent and we decided to pull back a little bit the stand because we are thinking that probably the landing zone uh, is going to be too short. So we resheet and start again. John, can you superimpose the semen cure on the roadmap so you know exactly to follow the semen cure? We can. Uh, we, we cannot now, but uh, we will be able to, to do it pretty soon.
So now it's done. Uh, we were definitely, we were not sure, but we were definitely expecting having this uh, expansion of the stenosis because it's not an arteriosclerotic disease. It's, uh, you know, remodeling of the wall post-dissection. So we were expecting having the pipeline uh, to, uh, you know, reopen, quote, quote, the stenosis. The decision to uh, use the pipeline, uh, it's just because it's the stent where the radial force is uh, very uh, uh, significant. So with this kind of good radial force, uh, you can get this kind of result. The, you know, the contrary of the balance or the bad side of the good radial force is uh, uh, the navigation. So the navigation is not as good, but the radial force is better. So in this situation, you choose the one that you think is the most suitable for the situation. So obviously it seems that the parent artery has been reconstructed in a very good way. So this is a cement cure uh, measurement that you can see here. You know, you, you have uh, the distal part that was selected here. According to what you saw during the live transmission, there is no question that the distal part of the stand had to be moved back a little bit more, but not very significantly. So it seems that uh, the distortion that is visible here on the uh, uh, model, uh, which is given by Simon Cure, uh, is not uh, too much uh, uh, changing the proximal delivery of the stand. I was expecting having this uh, bulging inside the uh, uh, sac of the aneurysm, shortening the stand, but obviously it doesn't work. I mean, it, it's not the case. So one of the questions here is, uh, 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 would we use that way right there and Fred, okay, please, don't ask questions about material. I'm not going to answer those questions. You can use the stent you want, okay? You can use the stent and the catheter you want. We decided to use this just because of the radial force. If you want to use a netway, if you want to use the silk, you use a netway and you use the silk. I don't care about the material. Most of those materials give the same result. So please stop putting oils on the fire. There is no fire and there is no oil. Please, quit with medicine and companies. We use companies, we expose companies, but we keep the relationship between doctors and companies. It's an open, free course and we say what we think is the best. If you want to use any kind of scent, you can use it. There is no question, no objection, and I am happy. Second question. What is the advantage of the semen cure? That's a good question. Who knows about this device? Who knows about this computer system? Nobody. So that's a good question. My answer is, according to what I know with the semen cure startup, we know that they accumulate or they include in their data calculation the expansion, the flexibility, the shortening, the potential bulging of the stent in the wall, in the, the sac of the aneurysm. That's the reason why the model you saw was incorporating some bulging of the stent in the sac of the aneurysm. Among those multiple data, they give the best length of the stent after deployment. And as you saw, it is almost reality. So this is a big data calculation. You'll get, I think tomorrow, yes, you'll get tomorrow a kind of overview of what's going to happen to you with those big data manipulations. You know, our job is going to change completely. Today, you keep on looking and reading your MR. Tomorrow, tomorrow is tomorrow. Finished. You don't need any neuroradiologist to, need your, to read your MR. But data meaning, data meaning, which is exactly the word, will do the job. So concentrate on what you want to do for the treatment and forget about the pictures. So this is the advantage of the semen cure according to what I know. I don't know if somebody from semen cure will be there later on but we can ask him more precisely. 
do you think that the true fenestration of the work and its consequence of the dissection? I don't know. Do you have an idea about this? It, yeah, it's a true fenestration, but it's a true dissection, but is there a relationship in between? Uh, I don't know. Jacques? Yes. Can I have a question here, Ishtaya? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, you, you seem to be happy with the, uh, with the accuracy of the uh, semen cure uh, simulation, right? Um, can we just have the uh, simulated picture again, parallel with the uh, final uh, non-subtract? Okay, we can try to do that, definitely. My impression is that on the simulation, we have seen, as you pointed out, a significant bulging into the aneurysm of the pipeline. In the reality, instead of that, there is a stretching of the pipeline across the aneurysm. It's elongated. Instead of bulging into the aneurysm, it's actually stretched. So I would assume that uh, the uh, length of the device on the simulation compared to the fluoroscopy is, does not, do not match each other. Because, again, in the simulation, you would expect to have significant more shortage due to the bulging of the stent into the aneurysm, which does not happen in the reality. Yet, uh, Ron actually needed to replace the device because of the shortage of the practical landing stone. Yeah. I'm not so much convinced about the accuracy of that simulation. Uh, I totally agree with your comment and your explanation. but. We have the explanation from the guy from uh, Simon Cure. So we let you listen to what he's uh, saying regarding the question because he understood you when you were speaking. So Laurent is going to speak in the name of Simon Cure. Okay, please. Let's, let's wait for the, for the answer. Basically, that's exactly what I was trying to explain to you. The bulging is part of the calculation. So when you see the bulging, it's integrated in the calculation of the length, but it doesn't interfere with uh, the, the true deployment. During, during the procedure. So uh, you are both close together, aren't you? Yes, yeah, that's, that, that's what I pointed out, that there is a significant difference. But during the procedure, for the first attempt, when Laurent was deploying the device the first time, it was actually bulging into the aneurysm. So my impression was that finally, in order to make sure that there is enough landing zone proximally, he needed to change the deployment technique instead of pushing while crossing the aneurysm, stretching to make sure that with the same length of the device, he has enough uh, proximal landing zone. That was my impression. Might yeah. be wrong. Yeah. But there is a difference. You see the linear reconstruction of the. There is a difference between the length and the positioning. As far as you got the right length, then this is your decision to position the stent where you want because you know where it's going to deploy. You know, if you have a, a 14 uh, millimeter stent, after deployment, it represents 17 millimeter. You know that it's 17 millimeter then it's your choice to select where you want to land. But you know exactly that it's 17 millimeter that you will deploy in the vessel and you know where it goes from the semen cure reconstruction. May if I you superimpose this to the semen cure on the drawing or on the picture 
you can say, I want to go this from here. Then during the manipulation of the stent, your impression is maybe it's better if we have a more, you know, uh, segment of the stent proximal to the aneurysm. So we decide to do that. The reason why we decide to move back a little bit the stent is just because we wanted to be sure that it would be better for the patient to have more proximal stent, understanding that the covering of the aneurysm distally was okay. Are you saying that the final deployment length of the pipeline would have been the same with bulging the pipeline into the aneurysm and without bulging? Uh, I, I'm quite convinced that with bulging it would have been shorter. The bulging of the pipeline is not that frequent because of the construction of the pipeline. If you compare to a silk, a silk is bulging much more that's, in the pipe. A thread is bulging also a little bit yeah. more. This one doesn't bulge that much. So, so some of the bulging is included in the calculation. I'm not an expert of this, okay? But according to what I know, they include some bulging in the shortening or the extension of the stent calculation. Can I, can I answer this? So the Simencure is like other software where you, you know, virtual stent and what no. have you. Well, okay. not, let, me, not. Let, me, let me just finish, please. So it, it uh, defines two items. One calculated item, which is related to the device itself, which you can computerize and calculate. What you cannot calculate is the behavior of the host, which is the artery, how rigid it is, how distensible it is. And also what you cannot calculate is what Laurent did, yeah. how much you push it forward and how much, and actually at the end, he didn't even look at that. He wanted to make sure he covers the bottom of the annual, so he pulled it back and stretched it to make sure it covers. But what this showed is it does not bulge. The bulging has to do with the neck of the aneurysm, how big the neck of the aneurysm, and how much you push. And Jacques is right. With, this, with the pipeline, it doesn't bulge as much as other sets. What, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that during the first attempt, Laurent was pushing and it was bulging, and it was short. So he needed to change his mind and pull it back from distal and stretch it to make sure that it's long enough, which means that according to my eyes, the original simulation was wrong. Yes. That's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I think, I think this, this case, more than the sim and cure, it illustrates the value of flow diversion in a case like this. Fusiform, irregular, That's true. previously ruptured, as an origin of the artery next to it. Whatever else you do would have never been as eloquent as this. And look how the least uh, risk we took on this patient. There is really very little risk here by deploying the stent, rather than putting coils, by putting coils in the aneurysm itself, do stent-assisted coiling. It is probably the most eloquent and the safest way of treating such an end. Wait, wait a minute. Did I say a single word against using flow diverter in this case? No, I did not. No, no, I know. I'm just, I'm I was just discuss, saying the, the I was value of the this. accuracy of I agree, I agree. That's but this is a beautiful case illustrating the value okay. of flow diversion. I agree with that. Okay, Michel, so the good point in your comment is that we are not able, the, the simulator probably is not able to determine the status of the arterial wall, is it rigid? How was the stenosis? Is no, it no, rigid? No. Is it smooth? No, I mean, the answer from Cimentier will come. The engineer will come, and after the break, he will explain exactly the calculation. So they try to integrate everything. Nevertheless, before the break, two minutes, we have uh, somebody from uh, uh, Medtronic who is going to give you the answer to versus uh, the difference between uh, uh, the Marksman and the Phantom. So the, the yes. Phenom device is, is uh, constructed differently than the Marksman. The Marksman's distal segment is 30 centimeters of coil, which makes it softer than the Phenom. The Phenom on the proximal end is made of a triple braid, and then it goes to a double braid, and then a single braid, and then the coil segment is only 15 centimeters. 
So the way we believe phenom works is in distal anatomy or in tortuous anatomy. If you need a more robust deliver, de deliverability of a flow diverter, that's where we prefer to use phenom over a marksman. And we still think marksman is great with typical or standard anatomy, but we prefer to use phenom in the more challenging cases where we need more stability and a more robust deliverability. So basically, more stability, more robust, uh, uh, phenomenon and easier delivery. Okay. Okay, so we go for a coffee break. Don't forget okay. that after the coffee break, you will get for the very first time the end. Oh, oh, oh there is another question here. I'm sorry. Yes, Jack. It, it seems on the, on the image there that there are two air bubbles in the aneurysm. Yeah. Is it true? Can you, can Laurent, could Laurent comment oh, yeah. on the pictures behind? Which, which can happen quite often when you deliver a flow diverter. It can happen that you have air, air, air bubble within the aneurysm. <laughs> so forget the coffee. Do you, yeah, so. <laughs> Do you remember this very nice picture? You have a small piece of ice with a white beer, and you have Trump looking at it. Fake news. This is what he was saying. It's fake news. No, there is obviously a small bubble. I will ask Laurent uh, to comment on this because I don't know what has happened. So probably it's a tiny little bubble that in between the stand. Because for me it's not so rare, system. and maybe it's due to the fact that the device is very compressed, and yeah. when you decompress it, you have some air bubble. So I think it's not so rare when you deliver a flow diver. Uh, specifically Hello. since, you know, we always do this uh, vaso CT, which Hello. is very clean, <laughs> and uh, we saw them, uh, we see them very nicely. It's, uh, it's a bubble, definitely. There is a bubble. Hello. Okay. Hello, doctor.